I'm going to do uh, my what I have kind of come to call the theme overture. In a symphony, there's usually this song at the beginning of the uh, the symphony that kind of uh, uh, takes all the themes of the symphony and kind of has a kind of a brief uh, overview. So I'm going to do just a brief uh, overview or, or overture of uh, communication and just talk a little bit about the things that I've observed as I've uh, studied the people who have this theme. And then we'll have Heather kind of add her understanding to that as well. Uh, really, communication is is really about people who have this natural ability for verbal expression that brings conceptual clarity and social connections. So it's both a a social theme, but I think it also adds adds to understanding. In fact, one of the things that I I really have sensed that people with communication really value is they value being understood. They want people to get what it is that they're saying. And uh, and the way that they do that, I think sometimes it certainly could be about people who are very good at presentations, about uh, speaking. Uh, but I think it's also about, it's not just monologue, it's also dialogue. It's about the conversation. It's the give and take. It's, it's both talking and listening, the, the dialogue. And so I think at its best... Uh, at its uh, most mature version, I find that people with communication are very good conversationalists, and it's in the in the in the context of a conversation that understanding really comes from. Um, the domain that this particular theme is a part of is in in these domains that we have is the relationship domain. But I also can see how this could also be a theme that gives people some influence. I often talk about verbal influence, people who influence other people with what they say and how they say it. And so uh, I would just suggest that we might also think about it conceptually in that influence, influence uh, domain. Some of the nouns that I kind of think go with this particular theme are uh, words like talker, presenter, conversationalist, storyteller, verbal processor, explainer, and maybe even writer. I wouldn't be surprised that there are some people with this theme or might be people who like to write, express their thoughts on words, on paper. Adjectives would be talking, presenting, processing, transparent, uh, interactive, expressive, captivating, and even entertaining, I think, could certainly go with this. Uh, this particular theme, I think, uh, uh, occurs about 13% uh, in people's top five. So it's uh, certainly uh, not the most frequent, but it's not the most infrequent. It's kind of in the middle. Uh, in terms of the, the theme that is most likely to be paired with this particular theme, and it, this is really not a surprise, it's woo, and it's really a pretty high, high uh, relationship, 0.45. If you have communication... 0.45% uh, of the time, you're going to also have woo in your top five. The, the least likely paired with communication is deliberative, and that makes some sense. Uh, just like uh, deliberative is kind of not paired frequently with woo, it's also not paired frequently. So I think the, the whole idea of being expressive and kind of open are, are things that uh, uh, characterize this communication theme. Um, I, I thought about uh, the relationship between themes, and we can talk a little bit with Heather about this when we get her on here, but I think about themes that could certainly uh, moderate communication and, and have, a, have an effect on, on kind of softening it. It could be possible to have deliberative with communication. I just said it wouldn't happen very often, but it did. A person who, who had it might be a more careful communicator uh, or responsibility. Heather, I think that maybe responsibility is pretty high for you. And uh, yeah. so I think about someone who is an ethical communicator. I mean, to some degree, t your your responsibility might determine how you say something. You want to say it in, in the right way. Uh, intellection and in communication could be someone who who needs to think a little bit before they talk. And then finally, individualization, which I think is another of Heather's themes. And this is really about yes. someone who customizes their communication. They don't say the same thing to, in the same way to everybody. They really want to customize it to the audience or to the person. There might also be some themes that I think could intensify communication. For example, someone that has belief might be a very 
passionate communicator, a very uh, uh, speak with a lot of conviction about a value or a cause that uh, is important to them. People with futuristic might be inspiring communicators as they paint pictures with words. Um, people with woo could be very charming communicators and people with pos positivity might be actually kind of uh, optimistic communicators or even charismatic kind of communicators. So those are themes that kind of intensify that particular theme. Um, I was thinking about uh, some, some um, maybe some quotes about communication and, and one of them that I heard, we, you've all heard the phrase silence is golden. I think some of the communication might say silence is not golden. <laughs> and, and, and the reason, here's the reason why I think to some degree silence can easily be misinterpreted. What does it mean that you're quiet? Usually uh, when we speak, it's easier to, to understand how someone's feeling. I also came across the, an, another quote that I thought was a kind of a good one. I have this kind of interest in, in the soul of a person. So this is what a, uh, a person by the name of, um, the name kind of is not printed here, so I'll get it later. But here's what this person said. One's language is a spiritual location. It houses your soul. If you were born in America, all your all essential communication, your deepest conversations with yourself will be in English. Your English is the principal instrument of your humanity. And so to some degree, there's a real connection between who you are and the words that you speak. And I think that's especially true with, uh, with communication. And then one more. Words are singularly the most important powerful force available to humanity. We can choose to use this force constructively with the words of encouragement or destructively using words of despair. Words have energy and power with the ability to help, to heal, to hinder, to hurt, to harm, to humiliate, and to humble. And those words are from Yehuda Berg. And I, I think it really kind of sets the stage for the, uh, the value of words.